As you can see that the strength and the courage that is lived out by these, these leaders has an impact in our larger community, our faith communities, as well as around this entire area. We were created in community. God created and said, ah, oh, this is good, you and I. And we we're created with that spark, the divine spark that's within us. And the challenge is that living into that full potential of goodness and love that's within us. And we use in the Episcopal Church, which is part of the Christian Church as followers of Christ, how do we live? We base our lives on the teachings and the life of Jesus. And one of the, the basic principles is to love God and love your neighbor as yourself. And that is how that living into that potential, this is how we take steps together. Um, and we do it re regularly in our worship together. We come and ask to be fed by what God has to say and speak to us in ways to live our lives and we are fed. We have Eucharist where we um, are fed by, by our very spirits. And how, do we, how does our spirit within us grow, that divine spirit? We're called to seek the, the divine spirit in each one of us, around us, all, all living beings. Um, and to strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being. Some of you might know that the Episcopal Church has in its roots, um, back in the days of the Reformation, there was religious political tension between leaders of the government and leaders of the church. We come to, the, to America and, and the Church of England comes and as we have our American Revolution, that we have all of a sudden we were part of the Church of England and now no, no longer are connected and had to figure out a way to be a church together. And so many of the framers of our Constitution in the United States, their daytime job was that and their nighttime job, they framed how the Episcopal Church was going to operate and function. And so we look very much like uh, how, we, how we govern and live in relationship to one another, like the American government. And we too believe that it is imperative that we participate in public life. Because there's not a separation, although there's a separation of church and state, there's not separation of what we believe. We've been called to love and to care, to respect the dignity of every human being, and to promote peace. And we do that that's the lens through which we look at and live our lives and interact in the public arena and picking and choosing who, what candidates are um, that we believe line up with that. And as someone said, that it becomes difficult to, I think, navigate through what people say and what people do, our, our uh, candidates for election. And so we pray. And by the way, in the Episcopal Church, every weekend we pray for our political leaders. We pray, as a, and, and, our, um, and we have prayers such as this that we pray that God pour down upon those who hold office the spirit of wisdom, charity, and justice, that with steadfast purpose they may faithfully serve in their offices to promote the well being of all people through Jesus Christ our Lord. So, our job as people of faith is to live, embody justice, peace, love, and that comes down to every human being and all of creation. And so our, we are going to elect people who will make decisions on our, on our part, on our behalf. How will we do that? We will use what everyone here has given us some real gems and jewels of, of what we use in discerning. And so may you as well and pray and um, discern and think and give, give consideration to what it is the people are saying and what you believe they will do for the well-being of all the people 
in the area for which they are running for office.